All right, new topic, and this is uh, the theorems of Pappas and Goldenus so that we can calculate the centroid of objects that are created by rotating something about an axis. All right, so this is for finding the surface area and for finding the volume of objects that are created by taking something, maybe a line, maybe a, a squiggly, maybe a, a few lines, and rotating them about some axis. So first, let's just think about a cylinder, right? Would you agree that we could, we, a cylinder is created by just taking a line, right? Taking a vertical line and rotating it about this axis. You know, imagine rotating it about this axis, and then we've got our cylinder. So the cylinder, you know, think about a paper towel roll. If we, if we have class or had a class, you know, if you've got a paper towel roll, think about the surface area, the outside surface area of that paper towel roll. Well, how about we unroll that surface area? Unroll the paper towel, and it's just a rectangle, right? Uh, the surface area of a cylinder is really just a piece of paper that was, you know, that was gone, gone around a circle, un, unwrap that, you know, open that sheet of paper. The surface area, let, let's call this L, let's call this R. The surface area, follow along with me, is height times base. The base would be this distance, you know, that we just unwrapped and unwound. The perimeter of the circle, right, pi times diameter or 2 pi r. Okay, follow that. Take a, take a sheet of paper, fit it into a cylinder. What is the area of that sheet of paper? What is the area, surface area of the cylinder? It's the area of that sheet of paper. The base times height of the sheet of paper. The base times height of the sheet of paper. The base would be the circle, right? The perimeter of this circle or circumference of the circle. And the height would be L. So 2 pi R L. 2 pi R L is the surface area of a cylinder. All right, what if we make it a little bit harder? And what if we say... We took uh, not not a vertical line, but a, a a weirder shape right here, and we rotated this whole thing around that axis. Right, the surface area would be this length, right? This length from here to here. So it'd be really. Now, you know, we'd have to really measure that, really find that, all right? And the base would be, well, well, over here, it would be that length. Up here, it'd be a lot smaller. Up here, it'd be kind of in the, in the middle. Uh, it would be 2 pi r average, right? Where our r is the distance from here to the line. Here is a different R. Here is a larger R. If we knew the average R, then we could take that R and use it and, and kind of say, oh, well, th this is just, it's just kind of a cylinder. On average, it is spaced this distance R away. So this is the R of the centroid of the line. Right, centroid was our last topic. We're we're building on that. If we could find the centroid of that line, then we could find the r average. Then we could say two pi r l, two pi r l. So the surface area is two pi r l. Where where r is the distance from the rotating axis to centroid of the line. Let me box that in. Let me reiterate that. The surface area is 2 pi r l, where r is the distance from the rotating axis to the centroid of the line. It is the perpendicular distance. 
perpendicular, just perpendicular to the rotating axis, to the centroid of the line. So if we found that the centroid of the line was, I don't know, about here, then that would be the distance r average that we would plug in into 2 pi r l. All right. Okay, similarly, all right, let's keep on going here. The volume of a cylinder can be created by taking not just this line, L, but taking this area, right? If we took this area and rotated the area a full 360, you know, a full circle about that rotating axis, wouldn't we get a cylinder? Wouldn't we get the area of, uh, sorry, the volume of a cylinder is created by taking this area, right? So this volume would be this area times the 2 pi r. L let me think about this here. Now, this area... We, we would go this distance r, but this area, we would go this distance r. This area, we would go very small. This area, we would go very small. This area, we go, we go a little bit larger r. What if we say, kind of the same thing, what if we take the r average, right? The r average... And again, this R average is the R uh, to the centroid of not this line, but this area. The centroid of this area. So on average, you know, this box, this box, this box, this box, on average, they all go a distance this R, they all rotate that circle, that circumference of that circle at R average, where R is the centroid of the area. Okay, let's keep on going. We're almost there. We're almost there. All right. So let's kind of put it all together. What if we have a, a, a bunch of lines? What if we have this line, this line, this line, this line, what if we took that shape and rotated it a full 360 around that one? Well, how would we find the surface area? Well, I would break it up into lines, right? Kind of like the cylinder, right? 2 pi r l. I would take this 2 pi r l of this line, right? I would take the, the length of that line, the centroid, so, so this distance would be r, that's the r that I would use. And if I'm going a full 2 pi, right, 2 pi is kind of how far I'm rotating it. All right, so I would do that one. Th then that would be the surface area created by that one. How about the surface area created by this one? Well, I would take 2 pi, it's r. What is the, at, the r to the centroid? What is the l, this l, right? Plus, I would take 2 pi r this l. So what is this one's l? What is this one's r? L is just the length of the line. R is the distance from the rotating axis to the centroid of the line. So here we go. Here we go. We're almost there. The surface area can be created by taking... Theta R L. If you memorize anything, memorize this box right here. Theta R L or summing, right? Surface area is the sum of each one's, each line's theta R L. All right, this is the surface area, right? S A is the surface area. Some people might call it A, but I don't want it to be confused with any other areas. This is the surface area. This theta is the angle of revolution in radians 
Uh, and, and y'all know that a full revolution is 2 pi. So that's why we see 2 pi a lot of times. If we're rotating the full revolution, it's 2 pi right here. R, R is not really the radius. Sometimes you can think about it as the radius, but R is the perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution, perpendicular distance of the axis of revolution to the centroid of the generating line. See, perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the generating line, the line that is creating this surface area. You know, this line to begin with, then this line, then this line, then this line. Each of those lines uh, has an R, and the R is a perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the generating line. And then L is just the length of the generating line. All right, L is just the length of the generating line. And let's go to volume. All right, volume is theta R A. Theta R A. So volume is theta, still the angle of revolution. Now, be careful because m many times, right, it's usually 2 pi if it goes a full revolution. But just be careful. Did you go a full revolution? Is it asking for this to be rotated a full 360 degrees or a full 2 pi? Or is it just going, you know, pi or pi by 2? You know, is it 90 degrees? That's pi by 2. If it's some other angle, make sure you can convert that to radians. R is a perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of, let's say, the generating area, all right? This R might be and probably will be different from this R up here. This is the distance to the line. This is the distance to the area. They can be very different. Most of the times they will be different. Most of the times they will be different. All right. And then this is the area. The area of generating. I don't know if I should say area. I'm the area of that shape that's creating the volume. Area of the shape that's creating the volume. All right. So if you don't remember anything else, remember this. Surface area is theta RL, volume is theta RA. And just remember what theta is, remember what R is, remember what A is, remember what L is. All right, let's do some examples.